you. What would Gingrich do to the economy? Our next guest is a newcomer to Washington who hopes to change the culture of the big government Republican leadership before it's too late. We turn now to someone who knows all too well the destructive effects of big government, small businessman, and Wisconsin Republican senator, and good friend of the show, Ron Johnson. Senator Johnson, it's a pleasure. Welcome back to Freedom Watch. Well, Judge, thanks for having me on. What, what, what's going on in the Senate now? Uh, what is the, the status of the, uh, of, the, of the tax that goes to, uh, goes to pay for Social Security? Where do we stand on all that? Well, we had, you know, not a whole lot's going on in the Senate again this week. We had a couple show votes, the exact same votes pretty much we had last week. Uh, the, the action will actually be taking place in the House. Trust me, no Republican wants to increase taxes on the middle class. But a lot of us have a real concern over starving the Social Security system when it's already basically insolvent. So yeah, that's really what the, you know, this, this is all playing politics. It's unfortunate. But that's really all the Democrats have right now is playing politics. You know, it's very interesting. When Social Security both came, uh, first came about, uh, the companies, the, the, the small business people like you are today that were ordered to pay into it challenged Social Security in the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, well, it's not a tax. It's just money being put aside for these right. people for some time in the future. Suddenly, without, as if by magic, it's become a tax. It's become a payroll tax. It's become a tax paid by employees uh, and employers. Should we still be doing this? Well, again, we've made those promises, and unfortunately, people have relied on this for almost their sole retirement income. And that is a shame, because it's not enough to live off of. And we're also, we've also bankrupted the system. And we have this fiction of a trust fund, which really doesn't exist. And so, you know, Judge, I really take a look at the, the payroll tax as, as a misnamed tax. I really view it as a contribution to a retirement fund, which is what it should be. It should be treated that way, and we haven't treated it that way. We've, act, we've spent the money in the trust fund. It's gone, and now we are at cash negative. Last year, we, we took in $45 billion less than we actually paid out in benefits, and we won't go cash positive again unless we change the system. And the president doesn't want to change the system. The president wants to make Republicans look like the bad guys because they're trying to keep the system solvent. They don't want to reduce the contributions to Social Security, which the government calls a uh, payroll tax. The president wants to reduce the contributions to Social Security so he can claim he's a champion of the middle class. Right. What he's really doing is just something he loves to do, Senator Johnson, increase the federal government's debt. That's what he's doing. And let's face it, Judge, we've done that on hyperdrive the last three years. We've gone from basically about 40% of, of debt in terms of our GDP in the 70s and 80s to 100%. Right now, our debt is 100% of GDP, and it's on a trajectory to be 116% of, of our GDP in just 10 years. And you know, the, what, what's happened here, Judge, is we have this structural deficit. You know, over the last 50 years prior to President Obama's administration, we took in about 18.1 percent of, of the economy in revenue, but we spent about 20.2 percent, and now we're at about 24 percent, and our revenue is only about 15 percent because of the recession. And again, we're on a trajectory in terms of spending to almost 35 percent of GDP. So this is simply unsustainable, and President Obama is not leading. He's not addressing the problem. Senator, you do not talk like a typical big government Republican politician. You talk like a small business person who understands how the economy works and how the government should get out of the way. I, I hear between the lines your argument that big government is to be feared, not made more efficient, not used more aggressively. Do you run into some sort of establishment orthodoxy, even amongst Republicans, when you make the argument to them that you just made to our viewers? Well, Judge, I think most Republicans agree with me that our government is too large, it's too intrusive in our lives, it certainly costs too much, and it really is our goal to get the size and scope, all the regulations, and the cost of government down. So I, I really think there's, there's a great deal of of uh, unanimity in terms of Republicans that that's exactly what our goal is, that's what our agenda should be. When, when, when you run for a leadership position amongst Republicans in the United States Senate, which I believe you're contemplating doing, I don't want to put your hand if that decision has not yet been no, made, uh, isn't it likely no, we, we, you're going to run up against some establishment, big government type who doesn't want you, Ron Johnson, small businessman from Wisconsin, to rock the boat? 
Well, actually, I am running for the vice chair of our conference here, and the vote is going to be next Tuesday. But, you know, listen, I'm, I'm talking to my fellow senators. I think it is, is important that uh, somebody from the private sector who's manufactured products, created jobs, exported products, you know, somebody who's been outside of Washington does have a seat at, at the leadership table. I think that's very important. I think there's an awful lot of my fellow Republican senators that, that agree with me, and, and hopefully I win this race on Tuesday. Well, we hope you win it, too. Thanks very much for joining us, and we'll see you on the show next week. Thanks for having me on.